Welcome to the meeting. Minutes to Mayhem. Crowley versus Higson. So Kevin, you're coming into Cody's hometown. There's going to be about 4,000 fans all screaming for the Crippler. Why'd you decide to take this fight? It doesn't bother me one bit. I'm taking this fight because I'm fighting whoever there is. It doesn't matter to me. I'm coming, I'll am coming. i fight you on Mars if I have to. I'm coming there to win and I'm going home. That's it. Cody, all those fans are going to be screaming your name. How do you keep from being distracted from all that and put your focus on Kevin? Um, you know what? I got one goal in mind, and that's to come out victorious May 5th. And nothing gets in the way of that. I have laser focus. And, you know, I, I've, I've been in there with distractions before. And having fans share my name is not going to be a distraction. All it's going to do is help me. Last time you were at the Memorial Center, your opponent quit on you, couldn't handle your power. Are you prepared for that happening again, or are you training to go the distance? Um, I, I'm definitely prepared, you know, to go in there and try to finish the fight. Um, last time I feel like the guy cheated, cheated me. He cheated, you know, my fans out of a great night. Um, he also cheated my coach at seeing, you know, the level that I keep improving on every single fight. Um, I was supposed to go in there and get the guy out with incredible fashion. And, you know, if he wasn't trying to take an easy way out, saying it's a low blow, it, it was incredible fashion. You know, I got devastating body shots. When I hit them, they go down. So this time, let's hope he doesn't complain. So, Kevin, knowing that Cody's opponent couldn't handle his punches and just quit, how does that make you feel going into this fight? I could care less. I'm just coming to win, and that's what I'm going to do. It doesn't matter what he thinks he's going to do. I'm not this guy from Jamaica. I'm not this guy from Mexico. I'm from Hamilton, and I'm coming to give a beating. Cody, how do you feel that, about that? He's probably said it before, and you've seen. He says he's not some guy from Mexico. Well, I'm pretty sure he lost to a guy from Mexico. So I don't know how, how that makes any sense. How are you trying to be like a guy you lost to? And also to? came back and beat that guy. And then I beat Phil Rose. A guy who can't even go more than two rounds with me. No, no? No, he can't. Just ask him last time he was in the ring with me. Sure, I'll give him a call. So Cody, you've sparred with arguably the best fighter of all time, Floyd Mayweather. You helped him prepare for two of his biggest fights of his entire career. Does that give you a lot of confidence uh, going into a fight like this? I've been, I've been with, with the best, not just him. There's many fighters just as good as Floyd. Um, I, what can he show me that I haven't already seen before? and been able to deal with. I've never been hurt. I've never been even stopped in sparring. Never, never been hurt. So he can't possibly show me something I haven't seen before. There's not many fighters at this level who have been in the ring with the likes of Floyd Mayweather, obviously one of the best pound for pound fighters. How intimidated are you knowing that Cody's been in the ring with him several times? At the end of the day, he sparred with Floyd Mayweather. He sparred with Manny Pacquiao. He sparred with Jorge Linares. You're fighting Kevin Higson. This is a different story. I'm coming to hurt you. Hurt's a strong word when you only got one knockout out of 14 fights. That's fine. It's going to be great when you quit in your corner because that's what you're going to do and you're going to look up at your coach and you're going to realize you chose the wrong vocation in life. What's going to make me quit? Everything. Everything I'm going to do to you. You're going to realize you chose the wrong vocation in life. Mentioned some of the big names that Cody's been in the ring with. Talk about your training camp. Who have you been in the ring with that uh, is getting you ready for this fight? I have a, a great team at Sealtown Boxing, and I train in Niagara Falls, and we go to, we go to the, uh, the States, Niagara Falls. We train with people out there. We've got an all-around great camp with everyone that we need, and we're going to be ready. Coming into Peterborough, as I mentioned, close to 4,000 fans are going to be there. They're going to be booing you. They're going to be on your case. How do you get around that, and how do you let it from being a distraction? I actually welcome it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to being the bad guy, and I can't wait. Cody, this is your third fight at home. Does it get easier, or how do you feel going into homecoming three? Um, you know, it definitely it gets easier. Um, being a promoter is a hard job, man. I'm trying to be a fighter at the same time while also build my business. Um, so I got more people stepping up their game, let me focus more on my fight as my fights, you know, um, they keep getting harder, right? So now I got to push some of, the, some of the business side off to my team so I can just handle the fight. Title is on the line. Is this your toughest opponent? Yeah, I believe it's my toughest opponent by far. Um, you know what? I, I actually grew up watching Kevin. You know, he was always a couple of years older than me. Um, and I, I hope to fight him one day. And you know what? Idols become rivals, and now we he we're here today. 
And, um, you know, he can play the bad guy all he wants. He can be a gangster. He can wear his chain, pretend that, you know, <laughs> nothing scares him or whatnot. But, you know, there's a reason why. I've tried to make this fight happen before. But why is it, why is it just happening now? You know, I'm, I, probably the reason why it's happening right now is because I'm paying him enough money to come and fight. You know, I'm the promoter. I'm writing his check. So, at the end of the day, I'm the one who made this fight happen. Is that why it's only happening now, the money? You can say all these bells and whistles that I'm faking it, I'm acting like a gangster. This is who I am. I'm coming here to fight. I'm not here to do TV. I don't even want to be here today. I'm here to fight. And I don't care about the money. I like to fight. He's never been beaten in his professional career. What makes you think you're going to hand him his first loss? Because May 5th, that's what he's going to get is his first loss. He's not going to last with me. Do you think he'll beat you? <laughs> Man, it's not a fairy tale, man. I mean, I'm the real deal. People think that I'm just some Hollywood fighter because I've been in there with the best people. You know, I try to make it look like I am a fighter, but realistically, I am a fighter. This man works a full-time job. He doesn't eat, sleep, breathe boxing. He doesn't know what I've gone through, what I've sacrificed. I've had very close friends pass away. I can't even be at their funeral because I'm too busy training. I've missed birthdays, marriages, you know, birth, birth of little children because I'm sacrificing to get what I want in life. You know, I want to be a world champion. I don't think he's made those sacrifices. If he did, he wouldn't still be going to work every single day. He, how, can you, how can you want something that bad in life when you go and you still, you, you won't give 100% effort into something. That's what I do. I give 1,000% effort every single day. So you don't think he's prepared for this fight because he doesn't have enough uh, boxing hours as you in the gym? Uh, I'm not saying that he's not prepared. I expect him to be a thousand percent prepared, ready to go in there and fight and be the best Kevin Hickson that he is. But at the end of the day, do I personally think that it's going to be enough to beat me? No, I don't. I respect him as a fighter. I think he's a great fighter. But at the end of the day, I'm coming to win and that's it. You've got a great training camp in Hamilton. What do you think about that? He's training all day, saying that you're working, maybe not training as much as he is. What do you say? There's 24 hours in a day, and I'm going to work, and I could go home and drink a beer and eat my steak, but you know what I'm doing? I'm going to the gym, and then I'm doing my road work, and I'm doing my strength training. I'm putting everything into it. To say that I'm not is ridiculous. I got a wife at home that I never see because I work and I train, and you're gonna pay for that. That's what's gonna happen May 5th. Do you think he's going to walk out with the title on May 5th? Not leave your hometown with the belt? Not a chance. You have to kill me before I lose a fight. People, people say that all the time, but I'm serious. There's a, there's a reason why I moved you know, half to a whole other country just to go and be better. Not, not to be the best, just to be better every single day. I do what it takes. So do I think he's going to win? It's, it's, it's impossible. There's a lot on the line here, Cody. Your friends, your family, hometown fans are going to be there. Are you worried that... He might beat you in front of all them? No, pr pressure, you know, pressure makes great fighters. And it, it's clear that under pressure, you know, I perform. You know, he's been under pressure before and his pipes have bursted before. He has lost. I haven't experienced that and I don't plan to. How confident are you you're going to hand him that first loss? 100%. Round by round, you're going to see inch by inch, you're going to slowly start breaking. And you're going to be sitting in your corner, you're going to look up at your coach, and you're going to say, this was a bad decision. But by throwing pillows? Sure. Or hugging me and trying to bear hug me and squeeze me. Sure, me buddy. Out. I don't know what you're getting the bear hug from, but sure. Okay. Well, I'm ready for whatever you bring, man. All right. I hope you are. Is that bear hug remark you saying he hangs on tight, doesn't take the blows? No, I'm just saying, I don't know. How's he going to break me down if he's punching and he can't break nothing? You know? Of what, what, there's no resistance coming at me with his punches, so I don't know how I'm going to get tired, how he's going to break me down. It's impossible. You might as well pick glad your leg up and try to kick way. me. I'm glad you're thinking that way. Okay. We'll see, right? We'll see. No, we will. <laughs> Just said that, brother. Yeah, I know. I'm agreeing with you. We will. He brings a lot of heavy punching power. As we mentioned, his last opponent quit, couldn't handle those blows. How are you going to take those blows? Are you prepared for that kind of punching? I'm going to walk through them and I'm going to smile. What are you going to bring back at him? Everything that, he, that I have. Kitchen sink if I have to. Do you train different for this fight, or you go in same expectations as always? No, I never, I never train different. Um, I always train for the unexpected. You never know what you're going to get in that ring, so I train for everything. I don't, I don't watch any videos on Kevin. 
Um, I don't need to. For all I know, I could be training for a guy who comes straight forward. Now, we all know that he, he doesn't box. He just comes forward. But, you know, maybe he went and actually got a great trainer for once, and now that trainer is teaching him to box. So I, I won't know until I step in the ring, so I prepare for everything. He's coming away all, all the way from Hamilton. That's a pretty long drive. You've got to think there's motivation, yeah. and he wants this bad. Not really. You know, you can hop on the highway, be here in a little over an hour. That's not very far, you know. I jump on a plane, I fly five hours. So I'm, th I'm the one really making the trip to come home. So with him coming home, do you think traveling the distance, you want it a little more? <laughs> You're coming to his hometown for this fight. That's got to be motivation I'll enough. I'll fight him right here, you know. Let's go outside. Let's do it. All right. Let's go. And don't scare Take me, Take your man. mic off. Don't scare me. I don't care. Let's go outside. Take your chain off, man. Let's keep it professional. We're going to break. Keep it professional, right? Well, things have calmed down inside the studio. We've got both fighters sitting back down. We'll try and see if we can get through this, guys. we just got a few more minutes here. But uh, let's talk about your training camp. How do you prepare for Cody, and what are you going to do to him in that ring on May 5th at the Pete Rowe Memorial Center? Uh, my training camps, they don't vary, they don't vary much. I, I go and I work my butt off in the workhorse, and that's what I plan to do in the ring. I'm going to outwork him, and I'm just going to keep going. May 5th for you, Cody. What are you going to do to Kevin? How are you going to take him down? Um, you know, the one, the one thing, when you watch Kevin fight, you know, he walks down his opponents, he breaks them down. Uh, but these guys aren't elite level athletes. Um, these are guys like him, you know, they work a full-time job. Um, they work in a factory, they train, they go fight. But I am the elite of the elite. I train harder than anybody else, you know. I. I, you know, I, I have Floyd Mayweather come to me and say, Cody, you make me train harder. You know, that's the type of level that I'm on. So when, when we step in the ring, you know, you got a guy who comes forward. He's in phenomenal shape. He has a chin. Um, he throws a lot of punches. Now you got me, who's always in shape, always comes forward, has a great chin, throws a lot of punches. That's like rock'em, sock'em robots. You know, I think you're going to see this. Both of us come to the center of the ring, try to back each other up, and you know what? We probably won't move for a little bit, you know, until I really, you know, bring out the real Kevin Higson and show the people what he's made out of, where he slowly starts falling down, either falls down or backs up, and I'm, I'm going for the knockout. That's it. But you know, I don't got to stand here and try to be pretend that I'm all tough or anything like that. You know, I just go in the ring and I, I do what I got to do. No, but you are pretending. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You're a half measure. A, a half measure. You're a half measure. And I'm going to prove that May 5th. You yeah. think he's just pretending right now? Yes. What gives, you that, uh, what gives you that? You're scared. How am I scared? Because I can see in your soul and I'm going to take it out in front of everybody. You got a guy who is ordinary skill. He's not strong. His boxing IQ isn't quite there. I, I, can't, I can't see why I'm scared. I, right. really, I really can't. Okay. No. You got a dude who's <laughs> pretty much shorter than me while I'm sitting down trying to talk his smack for you. I, I'm not scared one bit. When Cody says you're not elite, what went through your head there? I could care less. His words don't, don't puncture me what, whatsoever. Called you a fake tough guy. Is this an act? No. This is who I am, and you're going to see that. Yeah. What do you think, Cody? Is he acting over there? Is this the real Kevin Higson we're seeing? I think it's just a front, but at the end of the day, we're going to find out May 5th. So it's clear that we don't like each other. You know, we really don't want to be sitting here next to each other. I can't wait till I can just get up and go home. But at the end of the day, you know, this is my business. This is what I got to do. You know, I'm trying to make this guy a little bit of money. I'm trying to help him out. So. I can feel the tension. I can feel that this is real hatred between you guys. May 5th, homecoming three, mayhem at Memorial. This is going to be a huge bout. CP, BC title. How confident, Cody, are you that you're going to walk away with that belt around your waist? 100%. You know, I don't, I don't have to say it again. No, I'm confident. Um, you're just going to figure it out. You're going to find out May 5th. I'm pretty sure everyone else in this room believes it. 
I'm pretty sure his promoters believe it. So let's just set, let's just settle up. May fifth, homecoming three, mayhem at Memorial. East versus West, home versus away, Peterborough versus Hamilton. May 5th at the Peterborough Memorial Center for the CPBC title.